Why did you say so confidently? If Nicola was in the river, I will find her. I can guarantee you that. Well, I did find her in the river. Peter, it's great to see you again. Thanks, Luke. Always. Yes. And thank you for inviting us down here. And I appreciate you coming on the channel to do so. I'm presuming today is quite a big day for you. Is it a long time coming? How are you feeling about it all? It is a long time coming. I've been very sort of quiet over the last few months, letting the police do their investigation. And now the report's out. And finally, the truth is being told. I guess a lot of people didn't really expect this kind of moment. You know, you faced quite a lot of scrutiny over the past few months. I think people are gonna, you know, gonna look forward to what you've got to say today. When and how did you first hear about Nicola Bully going missing? When's the first time that that name was was said to you? I heard it on the news. It started to pick up news, but I, I didn't really take too much notice of it because I was extremely busy at the time. And because it was up north, mm. then it's sort of out of our area. so. You know, you get missing people all the time. So it's one of these things that I saw, but I didn't take much notice. But then I got contacted by Sky News. Oh, Sky. For commentary, and I get involved. It's occasionally TV channels ask me to comment on, on this type of work. That's my speciality. So um, I had Martin Brunt call me, and um, I went on Sky to do a commentary about side scan sonar. How, how can you search water and quickly? Do you just give in your input? Into yes. it as someone with knowledge yes, of how that's correct, this kind yeah. of mm. search would work. Who was it that called you an SGI in to get involved in the search? Was that the authorities? Was that family? Or? No, his family. It was originally Paul, um, Nicola's partner. Yeah. Um, I spoke to Paul, obviously a very distressed man when I spoke to him. And also Emma, Emma White, the friend. And kindly, um, I said, we can't just come up and barge into a, a police operation, but okay. we need permission to come up. So there was discussions with the police that day and they allowed us to go up. And I, I had a, a conversation with the police search advisor that afternoon. I got an email and um, th we confirmed everything. And then that day my team drove up and kindly Emma White actually put my team up free of charge at her farmhouse, which was okay. very kind of her. How did the police feel about you, you coming into the search are they, were they welcoming and forthcoming in your assistance? I wouldn't say welcoming. I think they probably want, didn't want us there in the first place. Um, Why is that? Well, I th in, it's an area I don't know. I mean, what you've got to look back is since nine, in 1999, I've been working on specialist underwater operations, that type of thing. So a long, long time. And I work next to the police forces normally. So okay. we're included in briefings. We're given all the information we require. In this particular one, it was just, this is, you're here. And I just felt from the, the minute we met them, I wasn't really welcome. It's interesting that because you've got a lot of experience in search yeah. and, and rescue. Um, anyone that's read your book will know of the expertise yeah, yeah. and the experience you've got. So you would think that you would be welcomed more considering you can potentially bring a lot to the case and close it sooner. It has happened over the years on different cases because we come, we sort of get you know brought in and then we generally find what we're looking for. Yeah. So that's the thing. So it often when others are unable to find things, you know, I get called in with a team, we use our expertise, and then we, we find. You're the man who finds things. We do. <laughs> and, and the team, of course. So were you called in specifically to search the river? Or is it is it your job to map out your search strategy and the search locations going off the information you have to hand? Yeah, normally I'd be working with a police search advisor very closely and also the senior investigating officer, which I didn't obviously meet the senior investigating officer on this job. So you would normally get all the information, you know, cell site analysis from, you know, mobile phone data, you would get vulnerabilities, you'd get all other issues that come into it. And then a search plan will be put together. And I th me, may throw my piece in as well to yeah. say, actually, I think we need to look at this area. So that's that's what we normally get. But with this one, we just got, we want you to search down river today. There's two parts of this river. There's the tidal section of the river, which is over the weir and down towards the sea. I mean, the sea's miles away. Yeah. So that's where Nicola was 
um, eventually found in that small section of tidal river over the weir. Over the weir. Over the weir. Okay. Then you've got the area that goes from the bench and then it comes down around the long bend down to the weir. That is a non-tidal section. So as the tide comes in and out, it will flood the river, just like on the beach, but it okay. will push the water up on the river, but it won't affect the area where the bench was. So that's a non-tidal section and very, very slow moving. So that is the part where Nicholas Foam was found on the bench. So this is what I call the hot zone. So that's where the items, typical where we deal with dementia patients and things like that, where they fall in the river, there's a slipper or something left. So that is the area everyone focused there. And that's what well, I would have searched that on day one if I had the choice, but I didn't have the choice. Okay, that's interesting. So you would have chosen a different location to search on day one, then you were actually t uh, tasked You would with. always search the area of interest first. That would be the key. That's the first thing you would do, yes. So she, there was quite a long time where uh, she was uh, being searched for uh, absolutely, before yeah. you arrived. Yeah. And you were there for three days? I was there for two, two days. days of solid searching, long, solid days of searching. Interesting. Yeah. How does it work when you work alongside a police investigation? Do you have to operate under their instruction. It's their operation, so you work with them, and obviously I get given normally a lot of confidential information, which never gets out to the media, obviously, because it's very, can be very sensitive, secretive information that you're brought in, indoctrinating into these inquiries, and it's, it's key that that's kept out of the public eye. So were you given prior permission to dive if you were to find a target? For example, if you find a target at this point of the river. Yeah. Do you then need to take that information to the police and go, we've, we've located something here? And then is it down to them to act upon that? Absolutely, that's the protocol you'd always follow. So, you know, there's, there's many documentaries been made about us and working alongside the police. You know, on you find, or find a weapon or, or find human remains, straight away you let the police officer know. And it's the same with, with a body. Once we locate a body in the river, we will tell the police. The police will then relay that to the, uh, the, those who need it. The area will be cleared and that will be acted upon. And then the police will normally, bearing in mind we are the team who normally dive and recover, yeah. They, when they give us the instructions to dive, the only time it would change if, if you're in a fast flowing river and you had no time to act and it wasn't a suspicious circumstance it was it was something the body moving quick down the river and yeah. you had to throw a diver in to grab it then that's a different different ball game but normally you you work alongside the police they will instruct you and then we will recover the evidence or, or body as, as required so that's important what you just said then so you'd relate to the police now would they then go in or are you able to go in? We are called in as an underwater search team. So we would locate with a sonar yeah. or other methods, and then we would recover the evidence or the body for the police. Just to rewind a second, you would locate, relay yes, to the police, correct. and then normally be given permission to then go in yourselves. That's correct. But on this, in this case, the Nicola Bully case, the you, you weren't able to go in, they, they would go in. Well, we, we could have done if, if we were instructed, but there was a pl underwater, the Northwest Underwater Search Unit from the police, which is made up of four forces. So it's sort of North Wales, Ch um, Cheshire, yeah. Greater Manchester, My neck of the woods. Cumbria. Yeah, so it's, it, it covers four areas, four yeah. counties. How long were you searching the river before you found what you knew to be a target lying on the riverbed? Well, we, we the first day was Monday the 6th. So we were searching from, as instructed by the police, from the weir and we were given down to Cartford Bridge, which is two or three miles down. It's, okay. it, it's, it's quite a long way down. But that area was interesting. There was nothing seen on the bottom. It was crystal clear. The tide goes out. It's, it's extremely shallow. So if Nicola had been in that part of the river where she was eventually found, she was found in the reed bed just up on the side. Yeah. And again, I'll make it clear. That was now remit to search the reeds. I'm focusing purely on a, on a sonar in a screen and we're focused the on, on the riverbed. Yeah. That's the land search teams who do that, which we would normally potentially assist with, but on this case, we didn't have, or, there was a small team. So are they walking, are they tasked to walk along the bank, looking down? They are. How does that work? I, they are, but I didn't see any search activity going on when I was up there at all. Along oh, really? the riverbank. No, there was officers, Rick, uh, local officers and PCSOs walking up and down a couple, 
but it was it was extremely quiet. I did. I know the police divers were working further out towards the estuary. They were quite busy, but we, I, uh, when we were there, there was no search activity going on whatsoever. Never saw anyone be beat sticks or anything. I think it had already been done, and I think they were probably waiting for Nicola to pop up somewhere. What, like, as in pop up? Yeah. Float up, like... Potentially, yeah. Like the... Do you want to explain a little bit about how bodies, how it works when yeah, well, a body goes into a river and... Bodies never float. They always go to the bottom if they drowned. So what you've got to look at is once someone drowns, they we all, every, all our statistics, and it's known worldwide, every body... So on average, we deal with about 10 drowning victims every summer and a number of suicides each year. We always find them in, if they, if they go in a lake, they're always where they go down. If they're in a river, they'll be nearby as well. The only time that will change is if it's a raging torrent. Some people think that the coats you had on actually would act as a buoyancy aid. That doesn't seem right to me, because that's a big coat that surely would fill up with water. So Nicola had jeans on, she had a heavy coat. That coat would have flooded. Now, if she had fallen in, she may have struggled for some time to float. So she could have paddled, uh, trying to gasp and trying to f keep herself afloat with this heavy coat on. And then eventually she would have gone down. But she won't go down, you know, you won't go down straight away. You've got to drown and then you get flood and then you, or, or you get dragged to the bottom by the weight of your clothing. The first target that you, that you got uh, on the sonar, what kind of image was that? It was a clear symmetrical shadow, shadows of either two arms or two legs. Shadows. It, it was shadows. To me, it took human form straight away. I knew that, you know, we're because we're looking for a body, and I know straight away when I see a target like that with all my experience, it's, it's this was Nicola. And that's why straight away that I located it, I, I, we re-scanned it quickly again. I got exactly the same target. And then I then contacted. So you rescanned it again, and you yeah, got we just another image. We, what you try to do is you, you you do what they call Union Jack. You go across one way, yeah. across the other. But we didn't do you. I didn't need to do a Union Jack. I just I just done a couple of images of it, and I immediately contacted the police search advisor. So just to clarify, what what day and date and time was your first target observed? Well, the first and only target was you know the target we identified was Tuesday the seventh. Um, of February 2023. Um, I commenced my search at 10.28 that morning and six minutes later at 10.34, I located the target. So yeah. where you were searching on day two, which was, um, this was, the, this was the area that you wanted to search on day one? That's correct. So you would have found, you would have uh, made that discovery after six minutes of arriving on the scene yes, overall? that's correct. It's very interesting. You've stated on a few occasions that if a body is discovered in water using side scan sonar, there's no mistaking that it is indeed that of a body. Uh, and that is backed up in your book where there's a very clear image yeah. of a body yeah, yeah. In, in, in a river. So when you made the discovery, the target in the river wire, were you 100% sure that's what it was? I was totally sure that that took human form straight away yeah. and it needed to be dived straight away right i because it was the shadows of two arms two legs whatever th that needed to an immediate dive yeah and that's what we wanted to do when i contacted the police search advisor i said we need to put divers in now we'll put our divers in uh, but he refused that request and he said you are not to dive we will dive did you believe the discovery of the target to be nicola going off the size of it i did straight away straight away yeah can you tell us exactly where this target was found and how far, more importantly, from the bench was it? I think people will be very interested to know where this target was actually found. The target was found um, approximately 75 metres from the bench. 75 metres? 75 metres, just down the river from the bench, which again fits the pattern really of a, a person who had, where, however she got in the river, and we'll never know, but how whether she fell in or she was pushed in or she, I don't believe she jumped in, but it was one of these... It, she's in the right area. So had the police and other search teams already searched that area where you found Nicola prior to you searching? Yes, it had been searched thoroughly. I was told that the police divers had searched it three times. See, that amazes me that there was, there was eight to 10 days of searching and she was 
75 meters away. That's, that's baffling. It's very interesting. During the inquest video, PC Thackeray was, they, they done a, tried to do a reconstruction of how Nicola would have behaved in the water. Now, when a body, like I said before, goes to the bottom, he, you've got a, now a police diver. He's laying on his back with a GoPro camera on his head. And he said he's floating down the river and Nicola would have, bearing in mind he's in a rubber dry suit. Yeah. He's paddling himself along, one dimensional because there was no camera crew on the bank filming him, what he was doing. There was just him. And, 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 and he's alive. And he's alive. And he's paddling himself down the river and over the weir. And he said he, he would have gone down and she would have about 300 meters down, popped over the weir. That's how she got over there. And firstly, that's not actually independent at all because he works for Lancashire Police. He's, he's on to comment. He, interesting in the video, and this is a really point what people need to see, he said, and, and, and Nicola, when I found her, she was on the target, the, the image, just past a little island in the river. Oh, yeah. 75 metres down, it jutted out. It wasn't called an island, it was just where it banked up over the years. Yeah. He said, we searched to this area. We, I, I remember searching up to this point, and I think we searched past this bit. I think. think, yeah. If you'd done a proper search of that river, Nicola would have been found the same day. What's the feeling that you get when you think like that's that's Nicola in there? Is it sadness mm. that the hope of her being alive is gone? Is it satisfaction that you fulfilled your job? Is it relief that you can bring closure to the family? Um, and you can end public speculation. Like, what's what's your feeling? No, it's total sadness, and then you think that this is a mother of two two girls. Yeah, that's the saddest thing. Yeah. That's the saddest yeah. thing. Once you've made that discovery, what's the first thing you do? Is it is that when you go and speak to the police? Yes, and it was a phone call on that day. I, I made a phone call to the police, and then I just sent the image, the screenshot of the laptop, what I had in front of me. Once they've gone in and then they've dived, um, do you then wait for them to confirm if it's Nicola or not? Are you I, privy to that information? No, Should well, I, I didn't. I continued sonar because I didn't. the media didn't know what was going on. And again, this was the only operational bit of information that I had. Right. I never, you know, although I spoke to the media on occasions, there were no one else to speak to. But I didn't let the, because the media said to me, what's happening? I said, oh, I'm not sure. I think the police are doing a bit of diving down there. And we just, to take the interest off of that area, we just carried on sonar and up the river. Oh, like just keeping busy, kind just of. Just keeping busy. Keeping I, didn't, busy. I didn't want to draw attention and then all stand around. I mean, what we would normally do, we would normally drop a float in, a, a shot boy with a, a weight on the bottom, like a lead weight, yeah. and it would mark on the surface. I suppose you can't do that in this no, scenario. There was too many, too much media. There was yeah. no, there was no cordons. It was, they were just everywhere. And how long before they come back and updated you on what they'd, on what it was that you'd located? I got a message passed through my dive supervisor to me and they just come back and said, target's negative, it's nothing. Target's negative? Mm. Yeah. What was your first thoughts when you heard that? Because obviously with your expertise and mm. your experience, you, you, know what you, you know what you've located really, don't you? Well, I was baffled because I'm never wrong on these targets. I wanted obviously to go back and recheck that. You wanted to go back? Mm. The, on, when was, when was this then? I wanted to go back that day and we did. So we did go back to that area once the police had gone that afternoon. Once they'd gone? Yes. And did you do another, did you go down with your sonar again? Yeah, re -sonar. Did you get another image? Yeah, I got, I, I got, I got a number of images, yeah. A number of images. Again. Clearer, different, yeah, more? One, um, yeah, did one, it reconfirm what one, you thought you knew? They were clear. They were very clear. But I, again, I, because I, the police said to me it was nothing. And I'm, I, I felt pretty deflated, to be honest. And I'm thinking, it can't be nothing, but they may be there right. And um, they must be right, because I, you brought up to trust the police and I trusted their, the divers, because I've worked with police divers, you know, they're, they're good divers and I've got no doubt about that. So I trusted their... I must be confusing that because you've got your own, you've got your own knowledge yeah. and experience and you, you know, you know what you what you see with your eyes yeah. on the sonar. You've got a, quite a strong idea of what it is, and then you're being told that it's negative. Yeah, I just felt a bit deflated. The team did, and thought, okay, well, if if there's nothing there, there's nothing there. But what's creating the shadows? You see that the bit I wanted to do was get in the water, and have a look for ourselves. That was the key bit. And you weren't able to. No. 
What was your response to what the police had told you? Did you? Well, I, I ended up doing a, a media statement that afternoon because, again, I, the media were everywhere, which you can't blame them and say they're doing their job. Yeah. But I was, as soon as I got out of the water and then I, they saw us working and said, well, it, is the river clear? And I said, well, I categorically, she's not in this part of the river because I was totally baffled and I trusted the police on that part. But then I went back to the hotel that night and I sat there and I just, I was totally, told my wife, I was totally baffled what was going on here. So the following morning, I want. I asked the police to say we want to go back and just recheck that area, that, but that was refused. You weren't allowed to go back. No, we weren't allowed to go back. No, no. And we, when was this? Was this the day after you wanted to this go back? This was on the Wednesday. Yes. So Mondays when you arrived. Tuesdays mm. when you made your first yeah. discovery on the sauna. Mm. Then you went back later on when the police were gone yep. to have a, another yep. search, yep. and then you asked to go for a third time. Basically, so you can't right. can't deny you were doing your very best to. Try and confirm yeah, whether this is Nicola or not. That's what we need to do is try and confirm or, or deny that. When you were told by the police that the target was negative, what was the first thing that you did? And did you go to your team and tell them that something's not quite right here? Not at the time I didn't really. It wasn't that initial bit because I just I just thought, well, I'm, I'm wrong. But I did say to the team this is a bit odd. Um, that looks like a target to me, a really good target. A head scratcher. Yeah, it, it was a head scratcher, yeah. Um, but again, that's why I went back that afternoon once the police divers had gone and I didn't want to draw too much attention for the media or anything. We just we just carried on down the river and I'd done a few turns around and it's all shown in the software. You see, the software is geolocated, so it shows of our boat track and yeah. it shows the fins of the uh, sonar going out as well, the swathe. So, it's all it's all covered, you know. And it's one of them as well, isn't it? If you're if if you've told the police the location of the target and they come back and say it's negative, mm. there's there's more reason to think to yourself, okay, that was nothing, than to doubt that they that that they're wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah. You because you wouldn't you wouldn't expect that if you give the target of where you've made the discovery, you wouldn't expect them to then go and search. That location and miss. No, I would. If there was no, something no, I, there, I mean, uh, police divers are highly trained, and I'm not going to knock them because I've worked with them for many years. Um, yeah. with a professional, and but obviously something's gone wrong on this particular case. So, if you're able to go back in on that third day, does your sonar and does your search strategy is it more kind of honed in? Is it more precise? Do you zoom in, looking for a better word? I would have gone back if we were allowed, and I would have thrown a, probably insisted that our own divers search that area. And recover, you would have recovered? Yes. We basically. Would have, we, would have, we would have done. On the 8th of February. That's correct. And Nicola Bully was recovered from the River Wire on the 19th of February. The problem is with the longer a body is in the river, they identified Nicola with her dental records. There was a lot of theories going around. There was a lot of speculation yeah. Uh, a lot of people did have their opinions on it. But though those extra 11 days, they didn't help. They didn't help in the in the armchair detective because it's the longer it went on for, mm. the more people are going to speculate. Now, I had my opinions on what I thought happened. Sure. Everyone that's watching had and still does have their theories on what they thought happened. Whether we do find out the, the whole truth about how she got in the river, I don't know if that'll happen. If she was recovered on the 8th, which is the day you wanted to go in uh, and have another look, mm. then that's 11 less days of family going out of the mine. It's 11 less days of conspiracy and armchair detectives. It's 11 less days of decomposition. So it's, it's, that, it's actually very, very, very important that you, you should have been able to go back in on that day because that would have made all... The difference, it wouldn't have brought Nicola back. No, it wouldn't. We all know that it wouldn't have brought Nicola back, but it would have stopped a lot of other factors. The conspiracy theories would have come to a grinding halt pretty quickly. So does, something need, does something need to change then with this, with how the whole, how it works with, so obviously you're like an outside entity that, yeah. that comes in and you get called in to help. But 
I think I think there's something to be learned from this by if you were able to go in, like like we just said, it would have stopped yeah. so much. I think what we've got to look at is police search across the board. So if you go to South Wales, they have a dive team, Devon and Cornwall. Between Devon and Cornwall, <clears throat> Surrey, Sussex, Thames, all this area, there is nothing. There is no dive team. There's one in Avon and Somerset as well. The next one's Nottingham. There's very few patches around the country now. What people don't realise is when somebody goes missing, say, I don't know, Gloucestershire and places like that, it's actually not the police searching the river. They don't have that capability. It's like volunteers. It's, and... it's volunteers from Lowland Rescue who do a marvellous job. And I want to hand these, beef these people up a bit. Yeah. These a bit of a applaud for these people because these are volunteers. They're highly trained. They wear proper uniforms. They've got boats. And it's a charity. They don't get funding from anybody. And the police don't pay them. So when you see a, a person with dementia or Alzheimer's go missing in the middle of the night at three in the morning, the Lowland Rescue are the first to get the call. They get called out and they search. So you were searching for, was it two days you were actually of searching? Long days in search. Yeah. Searching for. And what made you pack up and leave? We couldn't do any more. Was it? We were, I was, we were, we could do no more. We searched the river from the caravan park, up past the caravan park actually, all the way down past the bench, all the way past. And at that stage I thought, you know, no one's listening here, so we've got to go. And I, 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 I've I, never felt it. I, I left that scene and I was getting fed all sorts of information by members of the public and they were sending it to us at work. And normally you would pass that on to the police and say, it's probably nothing, but by the way, I, I'm going to give it to you anyway, just yeah. to assist you. Like in Surrey, it would be Paddy and say, Paddy, I've got all this information. I'll give it to you and, and you can make use of it and, or, or bin it, whatever you think. But they would look at stuff and you need to look at stuff. I had no one to talk to. I had nobody to talk to in Lancashire because the senior investigating officer would never come down. She would never come to the scene. I never saw her. Is that normal? Scene. No, not at all. You'd always get an SIO come down and introduce themselves. Do you think that like subconsciously in your head like you've 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 located something that looks like a body and you've been told that it's negative like do yeah. you think do you think that's played in your subconscious and you just think what's well, i've done what i've done what i can there's nothing else i can really i do. had no one to talk to nobody to talk to at all i i had no i've i've sent information to the police search advisor the other thing is there's a guy in black walking around the man in black i've heard about this man in yeah, black yeah and I was up there one day and this guy was asking questions of my team on day one. What can you find with a sonar, et cetera, et cetera. And my team said, that guy's acting really weird. And I've got the pictures, you know, it's the, the man in black. And then I then, when we were in the river on the 7th, you know, once I located that target, we were going up river and that guy appeared again. And he's there on his phone, and he's looking oh. and he's standing there. And I spoke to Dave and Nelson from the Sun newspaper. I've known Dave for years. So Dave, I said, while you're there, because we were on the boat, could you privately take a picture of that guy in black for me and just send it to me? Dave? Oh, really? Yeah. So Dave got his camera with the long lens and done some perfect shots of him. I then passed that on to Lancashire police thinking, actually, this could be could this be a key piece of evidence. Been, absolutely key. Just to chip in a minute, from my mm. knowledge of true crime, people yeah. that have... Go back. Go back. They like to yeah. uh, immerse themselves yeah. in the crime scene. Ian Huntley was yep. um, one of the key figures and was like heading up, not heading up, but he was very involved in the search for Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman. Yep. And he was he talked to the press on a couple of occasions. Yeah. Yeah. Duper's delight. You know, a little smile came across his face because... Yeah. They're, they're back, they're, they're immersing themselves in the crime that they created. But I, I sent that image so to important. the sergeant. I never even got a reply. You never got and a again, reply? I never, it was never followed. No one took a statement from me. Now, what we're looking at is a man who's been asking lots of questions the day before. Oh, yeah. Very That's suspect. suspect tell looking, signer. Yeah. And then again on the day two, he's mingling with the crowd and he's he's there and he's looking and he's watching everything. Why would you be there? He wasn't a member of the media because, you know, Dave said he's not in, he's not media. He's got no cameras. He's got no, you know, he's not a reporter because, you know, and I was quite shocked by that. And I, I just knew we were flogging a dead horse really up there. It was just, 
it was nothing was going right. I think that this man in black needs to be uh, looked into. Nicola was discovered on the 19th of February. Now, when you heard the news of this, what did you immediately think? Because she was found in the water, in the river. Did you think that it was going to come back on you? Because when you said, if she's in the water, I will find her. And then you, at the time, officially, you hadn't then. Did you feel like that could then come back on you? Because it kind of did, didn't it? Unfairly, but it did. As soon as I heard the news, I knew my phone is going to ring. It's going to be the media on the phone wanting comment. They're just doing their job. They're reporting on every story, which yeah. I, I, I expected to take a bit of a kick in, to be honest yeah. with you. I, I, I was ready for that. So, Peter, you seem to head up the media coverage, whether you kind of liked it or not, and you, you seem to become a face of the case. I arrived on day one. And I was surrounded by TV cameras and there was no police officers there to control it. We had them running down the banks with hack heavy cameras on their shoulders. Um, there's normally a cordon to stop that. I had drones flying over my head in my face going down the river. They're just doing their job. I've got no problem with the media, but there was no control to say at all. I would expected at least the senior investigating officer to call me and say, Peter, look, can you stop talking to the media because we want to get our own story across here, but they weren't. And that's what was frustrating for the public. They were actually being given no information. I'm just going to be very, very blunt. Why did you say so confidently, if Nicola was in the river, I will find her. I can guarantee you that. Well, I did find her in the river. And I said from day one, that if Nicola was in the river, I would find her. And I, I'm, I still hold to that today. Um, if we had been allowed to dive and we had been allowed to search the area that we wanted to, on the day we arrived on Monday, the 6th of February, 2023, Nicola Bully would have been recovered, located and recovered that day back to her family without fail. After six minutes? After six minutes. That is, that is, a not, huge not revelation. Not recovered after six minutes, but located. But located. Yeah. That, you know, uh, it, that was how long it took me. You wanted to go back in that river yeah. on the third day, on the 8th, yes. on the 8th of February. You wanted to go back in. Yes, you weren't allowed and that was, to go that back was in. That was not me saying that. That was witnessed by my team, who are highly regarded ex-military, and one of them is a ex-police diver. And it's, it, it, was, it was just shocking. Um, and I still, I, you know, I took the flack for this. I did become the scapegoat yeah, for it. I become the, did. publicly, I got discredited by being s suspended from the National Crime Agency. I then got struck off the National Crime Agency without any reason, no reason whatsoever. I didn't have a fair trial. And there were, I actually done nothing but went up there to try and help people. And I've been an expert on that database for over 20 years. And I've done so much good work for this country. On a few occasions on TV, you said that you'd searched the river X amount of times and there was no sign of Nicola. So this is after the 19th. Yeah, yeah. Was there a reason for this? When I say there was no sign of Nicola, I, the, the, at that time, I trusted the police with that, that they had searched that and it so was it nothing. So it all boils back to yeah. you relaying the target information I over, was, doesn't it? I was baffled. We did not get an opportunity to clear that. So I'm assuming... I'm wrong. And it's only when I got up later on towards the inquest, when I started to prepare my files, thinking I just need to take these images out of my computer to yeah. start looking. And it's all time date stamped when I'm doing it. And it was crystal, crystal clear. And I could see a lane there. And that's when I started enhancing the images and looking at them. And I've that's when you started thinking, oh, that, I have, I have, I have got, I have got this, something here. This, this is... And, and then I didn't get invited to the inquest and then I got very angry and I thought I'm now going to wait and see what happens. I know there's a policing inquiry coming up, College of Policing. I will get my chance. On the day of the inquest, there's a news flash that popped up on my phone saying Peter Forden has not been invited to the inquest. And like um, immediately I, I thought this, this is not right. This How can someone who has been such a prominent figure in the search, mm. someone who's done a lot of media, Someone who has, who will have a lot to say. Mm. How can they not be invited well, to the inquest? Now that is what I find to be an insult to the I, public. I think when you, it, it is an insult to the public. Well, when you look back, when we left the scene, 
we had no further contact with Lancashire Police whatsoever. So they didn't even request our search file. They didn't even ask for our sonar data. How strange is that? Nothing. When did you kind of realise that actually you're not getting invited? Did you see it coming? I had a gut feeling that I wasn't going to be invited because I knew that once I spoke with my credentials at, and I would have brought that target up. I would have brought that target up and that would have thrown everything out the window. And I, I would have turned over PC Thackeray's evidence. I would have turned that over as well. What was going through your mind throughout all of this inquest? Did you feel quite powerless here? I, I knew that I was going to be probably trying to attempt to discredit me again. And I, 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 I got tipped off to basically say, I suggest you put yourself a public statement out now because it might go your way. Um, it might, they might try and discredit you. In other words, people are going to ask why I'm not there. And then yeah. they're going to say, well, he's been struck off the National Crime Agency database, which means nothing, to be fair. Oh, he's, well, he's not credible. No, he's been knocked exactly. off the, the, so, the National Crime yeah, list. Exactly. So what I did, I put my own statement out at that time, and I was told to, to say That's good. from an, un, an ex-police officer, to be fair, <laughs> to say, <laughs> get your statement out there, because I've had so much public support from serving and very, very senior ex-police officers who I know very well to say, you've been stitched up big time. So what you need to do is get your statement out now to floor them, to actually put it out that you have not been asked for your search data, You've been not, not been asked to give evidence at the inquiry and make no further comment. What was your next step and what actions did you take from the inquest in June that you weren't invited to? Because obviously that was your, that should have been your opportunity to yeah, say there. what you needed to say, show what you needed mm -hmm. to show um, and give the evidence. So from the inquest up until where we are right now in mid-November, mm. what's been your what have you done? What's, what, what actions have you well, took? All, all I wanted to do at the inquest was personally give my honest opinion of not, not how she got in the river, because no one will know, but what would have happened to a body and show that there was a target because we sent our search report. That, that was another thing. John, my dive supervisor, ex-police officer, a diver, was my scribe on the day. So he made sketches. And he, over the exact things, what happened, we have our own search report. We sent that to Lancashire Police, to Becky Smith and to a sergeant, I'm not going to name, um, but she was in the public eye and he, he wasn't. But it was sent to both of them, the sketches, PDF'd, and it was sent the week after we, we, we arrived. And it says, target negative, by, dived by Northwest Underwater Service. Oh, so right. it was clearly that would have been presented. Not even a reply from... Becky Smith, which may be, or the sergeant, not even a reply to say thank you for sending it. Nothing. Uh, I mean, that's just shocking. It, it seems like anything you you had to say was yeah. just like, oh, from Peter, Ben. I was deliberately sidelined to take the full impact of this. Um, I could see what was happening to me um, only after I'd probably, uh, probably left. Um, and then... For the next couple of months, obviously it was June, and then we got into July, I went away on holiday, and then I got the email from the College of Policing to say that we would like you to, you know, meet us to discuss the Nicola Bully case. So this was basically the chance that you didn't get at the inquest? Yeah, that's to, correct. So we, yeah. You, could, you could do it with the College of Policing, and here we are today just discussing yeah. it. How long's the process to f effectively clear your name? And restore your reputation talk. And has it been stressful for you this past it's been, however long I'm it's been? I'm not one to get stressed or mentally distressed, but it's been a lot of pressure for me because what there's nothing worse than having your name publicly disgraced as someone who's done nothing but good. And I've got a hundred percent rec hit record for this for the work I do. So that's that that is not pleasant. But now I can come out and tell the truth. And the truth is now out there of exactly what happened. There's a quote from the Shawshank Redemption where uh, Andy Dufresne, who escapes, he crawled through 500 yards or so of mm. crap and mm. sewage, and he came out clean mm. on the other end. And that's, I think that's quite a good analogy for you. What do you want to happen now? And what do you think will happen now? One of the key things is here, a coroner should not be able to, on his own, decide who comes to um, 
give evidence at the on, on something highly controversial like this particular case because we didn't know whether Nicola was was um, committed suicide, whether she was murdered, or whether she simply fell in the river. So because we don't know that. He's decided who attended the inquest. There should be a new law. Nicola's law. A Nicola's law. There should be a new law out there that the, the, the coroner is overse overseen by somebody else to actually say, sorry, you haven't got all the evidence you require. Because you should have been we, there. I should have been there. Yeah. Not, but not just about me, but this is for future inquiries. This cannot ever, ever happen again. Do you think that ego should just be put to the side and... Just all work as one big team because at the end of the day, the end goal is the same. Well, I've worked with teams from all over the UK since '99. You know, in, in missing people searches with a national search advisor, and and in the recent years across the whole of the southeast. So we work happily alongside the emergency services. We've got a great relationship with the police generally. This was an odd one, but I think there needs to be a coordinated national response where if there's a person missing. You know, we can be called. And the, the thing is with the Nicola Bully case, if we take the cost, this has cost millions in the public purse, millions of pounds. It just needs to be saying, do you know what? Call them in, let's get this rat. We can find the person within the day and they can go home and we've recovered. This, is, this has just been a shambles. And it, we, we just need, it, there's a few egos out there who are causing the problems. And we've had it for years, you know, it, we, because they don't like we're a private company. But the police aren't the experts at everything, and the police officers will agree you. We use forensic archaeologists. They are not police. Crime scene investigators, CSIs, are not police. They're civilian staff. Okay. Volunteers, RNLI, very professional. They're volunteers. But you've got to be able to work. So the police, when someone goes missing in the mountains, they call mountain rescue out. If someone goes missing underground, they call cave rescue. The police don't do it, but they call them in. So there be there needs to be a national coordinated response to a major or any missing person inquiry to get the best resources, the best equipment, and the best expertise to then try to reduce the pain to the families who are ultimately suffering. It feels to me like there has been a few mistakes made here, and I think that's quite obvious. And, you know, let's not make it a, a, a negative thing. Let's no. Hopefully things can be learned from with what's happened. So can I just ask, have you spoken to any of Nicola's family about any of this at all? I asked the College of Policing to let the family know that what was going to be potentially coming out. So I, because it could be very distressing for them, um, and hopefully that's happened. Will you get involved in a high profile case like this again? If we were asked, I would. We're always there to help families. And even if like a few weeks ago, there was an incident in Liverpool where um, the same underwater search team were searching a lake for a missing person who fell off a paddleboard in Liverpool. Oh yeah. And it was going on for two or three days. And we got a call from the family on the Sunday to say, you know, because we're well known, could you assist? because the police have been using sonar. And I looked at the size of the lake and I'm thinking, that would take about half an hour to scan that lake and find a body. She said, could you come up? I said, well, again, we can't come up unless we get invited. Can, you know, you'll have to speak to the police. So she, she was dealing with the police. She told them that we were gonna come up that day and they, she got told that they were going to reduce the search. The following morning, the police dive team turned up. But after they'd said after that you were coming. we were coming. <laughs> and, and luckily enough, the gentleman was found. Would you like a public apology now? And who from? I'm never going to get a public apology because it just won't happen. I mean, I didn't even get a thank you from the police. I had no communication from Lancashire Police from the day I left. I never got a thank you. Um, I... I, I don't care, I'm not. I think the family need the apology. How do you think the public are going to react to this? I've got no idea. I've, I, I wouldn't want to try and say really. I, I think they're going to be shocked. If the police were using their sonar, I, I now question the competency of that, as well as I did the job in Liverpool when for three days they were searching, they still couldn't find her using their sonar because it was photographed in the media. How good is that sonar? How good is that operator? That needs to be looked at at the National Search Centre mm. because are we actually conducting underwater search properly? Yeah. No, we're not. We may be with divers, but then clearly in this case, something's gone badly wrong. 
because I've, how can Nicola be missed by sonar, a dive team, underwater drones, ROVs, I'm not gonna go down that route because they're not really effective in rivers, yeah. not murky water. But the divers with a jack stay search, what they call it, where you swim the line backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, near impossible. Her loss could improve the future of search, rescue and recovery. And that's what should happen. Yeah, she, it should. It well, should, there should be a death shouldn't be in vain. There should be a meeting now with the College of Police and myself and various other agencies to look at the way we respond. And I'm going to push this. Yeah. I'm going to push this up to Home Secretary level because I'm not happy whether they, things have gone here. I'm disgusted at the way this has happened and me being publicly discredited by the national... That You know, my details were leaked... The, 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 I got struck off by the National Crime Agency and that was leaked. suspended. That was leaked to the Times newspaper. Now, I'm the only one who had them details. So that was leaked to de deliberately dis discredit me. You've had masses of support from the general public throughout this case. The majority of my channel support you. People praised you and SGI saying that there's no, and I quote, there's no way that they would have missed Nicola in the river alluding to her being put back in later on. Now, that's mm. that's what people have said out there. Mm. So we know that she wasn't put back in the river mm. because she was actually located on the 7th of February by yourself. So we can uh, we can nip that in the bud. What message do you want to send to those supporters that have stuck by you and basically you know, been there for you? Well, I'd like to say a big thank you to all them and the people who believed in us, you know, myself and my team, um, that we, we went there with good intent to do the best job we could, and we did. We were acted with honesty and integrity. And we, now that I say now the truth is out, so now this is a big thank you to all them people. But I think what I want to say is that there will be people asking how these events occurred and how she ended up in the final location where Nicola was found. So Nicola's body was laying 75 metres from the bench, just by the island, and that's roughly around six metres radius of yeah. that area. And then how, people were saying, how did she get in the bottom of the river? So what happens? A body, when it's been in the river for a, a number of days, and there's no exact science on this. So the body, and, and what you've got to bear in mind, everybody's different. Yeah. Different makeup, larger people, smaller people, thinner people, body fat, people, body fat. Uh, but there's I'm, it, there's no exact science on this. Mm -hmm. Now, ne bearing in mind, Nicola was wearing a long coat, which can act like an anchor as well. So if she had been without that coat, she probably would have popped up earlier. So now it's winter, it's colder. So in the winter, they take longer to come up. We've had one in Thames Valley that took three months to surface. So she's laid there in that position. And then eventually the body starts to bloat and um, deteriorate from the inside out, microbiological action. Yeah. That's not my specialist field. But then as, as you bloat up like a bloated seal, and then you will slowly come up to the, the... Now, she would have had that initial anchor of the coat and the heavy clothing, but eventually she would have bloated enough to float to the surface. Probably during the night, one evening, towards the time when she was found she would have floated to the surface and the slow current would have then drifted her down to the weir during the cover of darkness. She would have then gone over the weir. She would have been picked up by the, the incoming tide. She would have lifted and then she would have still, still be floating, not on the bottom anymore because she's got too much gas, gas in her yeah. body. And then she would have been either gone down the river and washed back in slightly and ended up in the reed bed. That's how she's ended up in her final resting place. The only questions are left unanswered is how Nicola originally got in the river. Was she pushed? Did she jump, which I don't believe, or did she fall? Well, you've just led me into my next question. After all of this, and this is just your opinion here, what do you think happened to Nicola Bully? However she got into that river, but I don't believe that Nicola Bully was committed suicide. She was too. She was a happy individual. She hadn't been drinking that day, which people said she might have had alcohol. That was released at the inquest as well. So she didn't. She. She. I don't believe she jumped in and tried to drown herself because most people leave suicide notes. Most females we deal with who commit suicide have had alcohol in their bloodstream, and they've had tablets. 
That's always the case. We always find at least a bottle of alcohol. And normally they do, and I just want to say this, it's quite distressing, but the suicides we deal with, especially females, have put all their makeup on and put some nice clothes on. Wow. It's really strange. Wow. Very, very sad. <laughs> it is. So, but that's what they do, and they definitely fill themselves with alcohol before a very strong spirit. Alcohol. Well, I think that's important because, you know, it's for someone that has very, 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 very unlikely committed suicide, It's mm. th there's nothing worse for her for her memory and her dignity and her daughters, right, yeah. her daughters especially, because you know they've lost their mother. And mm. if they thought that she'd committed suicide and that their yeah. mother had left them, that's that's, right. that's a torturous thing to, very to, torturous, to live yeah. with. So I think that's very important. Um, I don't believe that she committed suicide. Yeah. You don't in your professional mind. And I don't think many people do. No, where Nicola went in, there's no guarantee that Nicola fell in at that particular, or went in at that particular point. What's next for Peter Falding? Hmm. We just carry on doing what we do. We just carry on doing what we do and uh, doing a decent job. Speaking about SGI, the real life Thunderbirds, which I've got a lot of admiration for. I've, I've met the guys, I've, I've seen the equipment, I've seen your HQ. They, you know, those red vans and those figures became, and yourself became household names. And, you know, a lot of people know about Specialist Group International now. Um, where do you want to take SGI? Where do you, where do you see this team, you know, in the big, big grand scheme of things? I would like lit to lead the way on a national response to missing persons. When a person is missing in water or on land, we have the technical capability and the expertise to assist. It's the button to push if they cannot locate, rather than just drag the families out and give them, you know, when they, 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 they're they getting desperate. Rather than let the family call us, we get called because what's going to happen if, if the police can't find and it goes for a few days and the same thing happens again, the family will contact us and we will go to assist them if we can. Peter, thank you for sharing your thank story. You. No, thank and you. I hope this does really great Thanks. for you and I'm sure it will. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Peter. Thanks for talking Cheers. to you. Cheers. Thanks, Luke.